Hey everyone, it's George Carlos with another little quick uh, technology tutorial. And this technology tutorial is probably about a tool that many people don't know about, but it's one that I use all the time. And I think it's not only great for educators, but it could also be a great option for students. And it's actually called Eno Reader. And I actually don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It is spelled inoreader.com. You actually see it linked in the uh, details below. And this is what I started using when Google Reader went away. And if you've been using technology long enough, you might remember Google Reader. It was just an awesome way to read blogs, have them come to you instead of you having to go to all of these individual sites. And basically it's an RSS uh, feed. And what it does, instead of having multiple tabs, checking in to seeing if people write, wrote new posts or anything like that, it actually comes directly to one space. And I'm gonna show it to you in a se second, but I think one of the reasons that I wanted to show this tool is when we talk about technology, especially in schools, and I think it's great that we're focusing a lot on the use of technology for our students to create and to develop and you know create whether it's you know writing through blogs, making videos through YouTube or TikTok, things like that. That's awesome. But I also think there's really a space where we have to focus on how do we actually do meaningful consumption. And I've been writing a blog for 10 years and Eno Reader is actually one of the ways that I actually get ideas to write in my blogs because I'm inspired by what other people write, what other people share. So I'm just gonna break it down and show you what mine looks like and then how you can set up your own. So what you're looking at is my setup for Eno Reader, and what's beautiful about this, you can set it up exactly the way you want it. Your students can set it up in a way that's meaningful to them. And you see all of these um, articles and these little links up here. To be honest with you, I don't use them ever. Uh, I'm sure they're create. I'm sure there's things you can do with them, but I want this really kind of just based on the mood that I'm in at the time. And what you'll see here is some uh, individual blogs that I have, and also um, just some folders I've created with multiple blogs. And so if you actually look into the most read, it's not just one blog, it's, it's a ton of them. But how they are posted is the articles most recently released at the top uh, to the ones that are released later. And you can see I have multiple blogs here. And so it's not always the same one. And so when you go through, uh, for example, here's an article on how to give good feedback by the accidental creative blog and I read through the post, it's all in this space. Instead of going to one or two sites, it's in this one space. Then you actually see um, this one, uh, five ways to activate learner agency in distant learning. So you can see this post by uh, Katie Martin, uh, great post. One of the things I love about this, you can read it, but you can also actually do this. You can highlight a section and then it'll give you an option and you can say, hey, I wanna tweet this directly. The reason I love this, and one of the misperceptions about me is that I'm on Twitter all the time because you know I tend to tweet a lot of things, but that's actually not true. I just, I just read a lot and I can actually tweet right directly from the space and I can tweet this election, Twitter's gonna pop up and I don't know if it's actually showing you right now on your screen, but it gives you that opportunity to see this. I can also actually, if I wanna read deeper, and sometimes um, blogs only show portions of it based on the settings of the blogs, I can actually click this and it'll open up a brand new ta tab and I can actually read the article right from the space. So this is one of the reasons I, I love this so much is because you can have it totally based on what you feel like reading in the moment and you can set it up based on different spaces. Uh, Livia Chan, uh, she's fairly new to blogging, but I really enjoy her blog. And so I can look at her stuff, see what she's doing, and I can look at it either um, as a group or, or uh, a blog individually. And like I said, instead of having 10 million tabs open up with all of these blogs and checking have they actually posted new content, 
they're all coming to me when they decide to post. And sometimes people won't post for a month, two months, sometimes a year, whatever, but I'm not going back and looking for updates. The updates are coming straight to this one space. So now I'm gonna show you just how you can set up your own and give you some ideas of how you might set it up or how you could help your students set it up as well. So what you're looking at right now is basically an almost blank slate at enoreader.com. I did set up a couple folders, uh, just kind of playing around with it, to be honest with you, because I've been using it for so long. I had to kind of remind myself, you know, how to kind of set it up from scratch. And you can actually see I have two folders set up um, in this space as well. And I actually set up Dan Meyer's blog. Uh, if, you, if you're a math educator, Dan Meyer's blog, lots of great ideas, lots of great things to share, uh, really great stuff. So I have these set up, I set up both an education blog uh, folder and then one specifically for math. And you can set it up however you like. Um, and I'll kind of give you some tips and ideas on how you can actually uh, do that through the process. But I'm gonna show you how to actually add a blog. And um, my friend, Ken Shelton, uh, I love his stuff and I wanna actually add his blog to my reader feed so it comes right to um, Eno Reader. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy his blog title and um, I'm gonna go back to Eno Reader and then you can just do a search for this and I'm gonna actually look up Ken Shelton's blog and it will pop up and it will give me uh, some options on what I can actually subscribe to uh, through this space. So you can see I can subscribe to the comments. I've never done that to be honest with you. I don't know why people do, but it is an option. But I'm gonna just subscribe to his blog. And when I subscribe to it, it's actually gonna give me some folders and you can see it's over here. And I'm gonna decide where I wanna put it. Um, so once you have a, a, a folder set up, you can actually just drag and drop and you can see it here. Now, the one thing that I love doing, and I think it's really helpful to me, is I'm not gonna leave this name as Kenneth Shelton. I'm gonna actually do it based on his Twitter handle. So what I can do is I can right click on this and I can rename subscription. And Ken's uh, Twitter handle is at K underscore Shelton. I'm gonna save that there. And now uh, when I look at Ken's blog, it will remind me of how it's set up. Now, the view that you're seeing right now, I don't like it in the way that it's set up. I prefer the reading uh, view. So I'm gonna actually set up this blog and you can click on the eye. And I like the expanded view. So now I can just kind of read it throughout and you know see what I'm sharing and, and kind of go through it uh, based on the most recent post is the one that's updated there. And you can go in the space. And so you can see it's actually under education blogs, but, it, um, but uh, Dan Myers is only under the uh, math blogs ones. So I'm gonna add uh, one more blog here uh, and add it to the education folders. Uh, Lauren Kaufman uh, does some great work. I'm just gonna find the URL, go back here, and then I'm just gonna paste it, add feeds, and it will give me some options of what you can do. And I am going to uh, subscribe. And then you can actually do it right from here. I know uh, just checking Lauren's, just to make sure I get her uh, Twitter handle, it's, it's at Lau7210. So now it's over here. I right click, rename at Lau7210. And so anytime I share uh, Lauren's blog, it gives me an opportunity to make sure that I tweet it directly to her and I can just add it here. Now, the way that it's set up with education blogs, uh, it will actually show the different blogs based on who posted last. So instead of showing Lauren's first or Ken's first, it shows who posted the most recent and that's the way you'll see. And you'll see them actually, the, the blog posts all mixed together, which I think is a, a great way um, to actually kind of follow these spaces. 
So now you're, you, you've kind of seen how you can kind of set this up and share. The other thing that I think is really important is that, and I know, um, I know a lot of people watching this are probably educators. I don't want to read education blogs all the time. I just want to read stuff that, you know, maybe I'm interested in. I think um, this allows me to create different spaces. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually create um, a sports uh, folder. I'm going to share and I can, I'm, I'm really into basketball. You can see my Fred Van Vliet, Go Raptors uh, shirt uh, right now. So I'm going to actually add uh, Raptors blog. So if I go here, I have one ready to go, raptorsrepublic.com, copy this, and then I'm going to paste it in here and I'm going to look for this new blog and see if it pops up and to share here as well. So waiting for that to actually share, you see the subscribe, I'm gonna click on that and then you'll see it over to the left. Uh, it should pop up Raptors Republic. So what I wanna do here, I actually don't want it to go into education blogs folder. I don't want it to go in the math blogs folder. Sometimes based on um, how new a blog is to me, I don't put it in any folder cause I wanna like see um, if it's something I wanna subscribe to and share. And um, so what I'm gonna do for this one, I'm gonna start its own folder. So I'm gonna right click and you can see there's all these options, but I'm gonna assign to new folder and I'm just gonna write basketball blogs. And now I save it and then over, you'll see a new folder pops up and it's only got one here, but now that it's set up, I can just add as I go. So I think this is not only a great thing for educators, I think this would be great for students. And the reason that I share this and I, I, I talk about that is because I remember as a kid, I loved reading magazines, but I was told, you know, and I, I would read them in the library all the time, but I was told that that's not real reading. And so what I actually, I was discouraged by that. And I think people don't really do that anymore with magazines, but do they do it with blogs? And if students can actually, you know, set up um, some blogs for themselves, uh, some spaces where they can read and you can do it as a class, it could be uh, related to your class content, they can be related to something else, but it's a really great option. So um, this is just enoreader.com. It's a great way to really kind of share some learning. And then I'll just give you some final thoughts. One of the reasons I love Eno Reader is because to be honest with you, I'm trying to spend less time online. And I love reading. I love reading the short articles. I love reading up-to-date stuff. And actually having a space where I'm not on social media, uh, not perusing, but I'm having posts come to me, uh, lessens the number of tabs that I'm using but it allows me to continue to read. And as I was talking about earlier, have that meaningful consumption. And a lot of the blogs that I write inspire me, you know, by some of the ideas that they share. That's often why I reference so many people in my own blog um, through that space. So I think it's a really great way to succinctly, you know, read a ton of blogs, have them go to one space, less than the time uh, that you're online, uh, reading some of those articles, and just minimizes that. And it's a great option for educators, but I think it's also something you can use with students as well as they find maybe different blogs, things that they're interested in reading and actually having it go to that one space. It kind of is an old school tool, but I still use it to this day. Thanks for watching. Hope that helped.